Welcome everyone to the fourth in our Why Emerge series. I'm Gretchen Hunt and I serve as the Executive Director of Emerge Kentucky. We are the premier candidate training program for democratic women across this commonwealth. And our mission is clear. We want to increase the number of women from diverse backgrounds serving in elected office in Kentucky. So if you haven't tuned in yet to this series, um, we have started this this year. We are not in person doing outreach on as we usually would during our recruitment tour. So this is part of how we bring Emerge to you. And it's been a tremendous opportunity to interview our alumna who are doing just incredible things across the state, who are trailblazers, who have incredible stories to share and are really our best tool for recruiting other women to see what is possible. So today I'm joined by um, one of our stars, uh, our many, many stars. Emerge over the last 11 years has recruited and trained 250 women across this Commonwealth to run for office. So we have many of them already serving in elected office like our guest panelists today. And we have many more who we know are out there in communities not yet knowing if that's their next step to run, um, and we hope to reach out to those women. So it is my joy and delight today to introduce my panelists today, who I will be interviewing. Representative Nima Kokarni is the first Indian and first immigrant legislator in the Kentucky Legislature. She's an Emerge alumna. Uh, she is an immigration attorney. She has been a leader in her field. And we are just so, so pleased to have her here today. She's on the ballot this cycle as well. So um, Representative Kulkarni, um, welcome today. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to see you, Gretchen. Thank you. So before we begin, um, tell us a little bit, I've asked most of the panelists this question, tell me about when you first felt the stirrings of, of to, how to be a leader or that you wanted to lead in this way. So one of the things that's really shaped my decision to become involved in public office at all is my background as an immigration attorney uh, because immigration law in the United States is a very, very political field of law. So you find that uh, while the regulations and the laws themselves don't change um, on an almost daily basis, depending on the administration and the objectives that they have, um, you have changes, huge shifts in our immigration system. So I got very, very attuned to how impactful politics was to the area of law that I was practicing for my client's benefit and also just seeing how outdated and how much change was needed to, help, to actually help people, um, I needed to become more involved in the policy the politics aspect of it. And so that's kind of how I became involved in just understanding the huge impact that small policy, policy shifts can have on an individual. And, and then of course, um, you know, I, I moved back to Louisville to start my practice. And, and so I, as a part of that, I did a lot of advocacy work, pro bono work, I'm um, just educating folks about immigration and, you know, just through my work doing that, got to know a lot of um, elected officials as well. So all of that kind of combined, um, you know, helped me along my way to, to, you know, take the leap myself. Gretchen, I think you're on mute right now. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, Representative. So you really have, uh, you know, catapulted, taken that huge leap, and you've been so successful at it. You talk about advocating for, you know, the immigrants that you were representing as an attorney, and then raising that up to advocating for folks at the legislative level. Um, you know, representation matters. We see that as a hashtag, but your leadership is just evidence of that. Um, you know, we know that when women are serving in office, they are more likely to focus on gender-based policies. And we know that when we have more women of color, um, individuals who come from immigrant backgrounds, first generation, that they also have really unique insights from the communities that they come from. So can you talk a little bit about your story of how you came to Kentucky? Um, your family is is um, full of leaders as well. So I imagine that <laughs> that um, both your mom and your dad, knowing them, um, may have really influenced your pathway. But talk about how that experience really informs you as a legislator today. 
absolutely. I mean, of course, it's had a huge impact. So um, a lot, if, if folks that don't know my story, um, I was born in India and my family and I moved to Louisville, uh, to Louisville, Kentucky directly um, when I was about six years old so that my brother could attend the DePaul school um, that is, of course, here in Louisville. Um, and so, you know, I learned from early on seeing them kind of leave a life, an entire life, and, and move to another country with two children, two small children in tow, um, and then just building up a life for us here, successful life, um, was in and of itself a huge, huge education. But then to see along the way, as they were themselves struggling, as they were building this life for us, um, that they always gave back. They always found ways to give back to the community or to help individuals that, you know, came came along that, that they could help, even if it was just in a very small way. So that's just something I've always had growing up as an example is, is any chance they got, my parents, both my mom and my dad, um, really tried to help whoever they could, whenever they could. Um, and it, it, again, it doesn't take a whole lot. You know, any little bit can help. Any act of kindness can help. Um, and of course, they, you know, became successful in their own right. My dad was the first director of the Office for Globalization and helped create that office in Metro Louisville, um, again, to lift up refugees and immigrants that are in Louisville, are in Kentucky, and make sure that they um, are, are felt welcome, but also felt supported and encouraged in entrepreneurship, in building small businesses, and making sure that they were civically engaged as well um, in their new home. And my mom started the Beaded Treasures Project, um, which helped refugee and disadvantaged women. And actually now it's part of Volunteers of America, who I was just on a Zoom earlier uh, for the Power of One uh, fundraiser. So that was, that was uh, you know, something as well, empowering to see her take something from scratch and build it up to a level where it's now um, a program on, uh, in such a large organization. So I, I kind of had to, up them a little bit, right? The stakes were high. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's that's really, of course, that's an example that was set for me. Um, and in this, in, you know, wanting to help people and advocating in my immigration practice, I saw, I looked around, obviously, after the election in 2016, um, as a lot of women, I'm sure, looked around and said, what just happened um, and what can I do about it? Because that is, that is of course, the way we think. Um, and I was really thankful. So I actually did emerge back in 2012, and I had I wasn't I wasn't running a race then. It was more of, uh, you know, if I wanted to in the future, what what would it look like? And so when I ran in 2018, and of course, you know, I was super excited to help you and learned a ton, you know, helping campaigns as well. So I encourage anybody that is even remotely thinking of, of getting involved in this field to help on a campaign, again, wherever wherever and however you can. Um, but really just the network of women and the support and the encouragement, um, you know, I think you were one of the first calls I made uh, when I was thinking about filing. And, and so it's really important to know that that support system is out there even after you've gone through the program, that it doesn't just stop. Um, and there's, there were all these women ready to help, ready to provide guidance and encouragement and support. And so I definitely would not be here um, without all of their help as well. And thank you for sharing that. You've given such a great illustration of the Emerge Network. So for folks who are tuning in, um, Representative Cole Carney has alluded to, you know, the network, which is that Emerge Network. So after going through the candidate training program, then being on the other side of it and volunteering for a campaign. Um, you volunteered on my campaign, so thank you for that in 2014 for the state legislature. And while my campaign was not successful, part of the collective success of Emerge is that we lift as we rise. And so when others may uh, run and volunteer on the campaign and then continue to support each other, and we have seen those numbers rise. You know, when I ran uh, six years ago, we were 43rd in the nation in the number of women in the legislature. Now we're 39th and we're poised to send potentially 12 women, even just from Louisville 
alone to the state legislature record number. Um, you also serve as one of just two women of color right now in the legislature. Can you talk a little bit about um, that that process and why it's so important? Um, you know, Emerge has a strong value of recruiting a diverse class, and we always have. Um, and why does that really matter when you talk about leadership and the network and what you can get done once you are in serving in Frankfurt or in a mayor's office or on the school board. So one of the things that you know I was so excited about um, as I was campaigning and after I was elected is the number of immigrants, young people especially and young women especially who are like, oh, I can do this too. Here's somebody that looks like me, somebody that wasn't born here. So it's not, and, and you know, I was a lawyer and, and all of that, but it doesn't have to be the sort of straightforward path. Like I, when I was five, I wasn't sort of dreaming of, of becoming a state legislator. Um, so some folks have that straightforward path. I did not, I kind of, you know, meandered my way and found that this was what I wanted to do and what I needed to do. Um, and I, I, it's very, very gratifying and very encouraging to hear young younger people say that now that I'm there. Um, and, you know, as we hear, and as you said, representation matters. It's, you know, we, we had a lot of just awful anti-immigrant stuff going on, anti-immigrant anti rhetoric and legislation um, that I think my being there helped at least inform people and help them see that this is what the impact is, right? It's, it's easy to sort of pass a law, it shouldn't be, but it's easy to pass a law without thinking of exactly who you're going to impact, in, you know, in either in a beneficial or, or not in a beneficial way. And so it's very, very important for, for that perspective and that experience to be there at the table, to be there in the room when things like this are being discussed and to offer that insight. Um, you know, we're in the super minority in Kentucky, but still that voice needs to be there and it needs to be heard. Um, and I'll, I'll give a quick shout out, of course, to um, Emerge alum Attica Scott, who has supported me from the beginning and who continues to support me. Um, and she was the first, she's the only black woman, obviously serving in the, in the Kentucky State Legislature, but she was also, when she was elected, the first black woman to be elected in 20 years or over 20 years. And so, you know, the, the think about that, there were no women of color until very recently. Now there's two, there's only one black woman, there's one immigrant. Um, and so you think about the makeup of, and I know women have made strides, but it is, it is just so important um, for all women, women from all backgrounds, all experiences um, to be there because it really does matter. It matters that you're in the room and, and it's, really, it's really great that, it, that Emerge is focusing on this. I, of course, I'm gonna help um, and I'm so glad that you're focusing on this as well um, in your new role. And we do have um, one more woman joining you in the legislature, yeah. uh, Representative Pamela Stevenson, who was earlier on this series, Representative Elect, um, who is unopposed in the general, will That's be joining right. you. Cannot wait. <laughs> Um, and, and I think that is a central value of Emerge. Uh, we also have, you know, we have women who've come from working class backgrounds, from labor or labor families. We have women from, um, you know, deep rural Eastern and Western Kentucky. Um, we have women who are addressing issues of opioid addiction in their communities, issues of clean water, um, you know, women who are really bringing a lot of key things to the table. And we see Emerge women leading in all those different ways. Um, so if you, if you were giving advice to a woman who may be thinking, you know, yes, I'm, I'm 23 or I'm 40 or I'm 60 and I'm, I feel that, that leadership inside of me, um, what's the first step? What would you say to those women out there? I would say, talk to other women. I would say, talk to some women that have gone through Emerge. I'm here. Anybody can call me. I know your, your door is always open. Um, and, and see what you can do. If public office is, is the, the pull that you're feeling, then work on a campaign, um, help somebody, volunteer, and, and just inform yourself. I think talking to as many people as you can is, is very, very helpful. It will help you understand the scope of the endeavor that you're about to undertake, um, because it's not always the same. Um, and especially, you know, we've got we've got such a huge shift in the way things are happening now with COVID. 
right? Where this is all, everything is virtual. Campaigning is completely different. I mean, when I was running in 2018, the, the advantage that I had was, was literally just knocking on every door that I could, just walking and talking to people. And, and you can't do that right now. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. But it really is helpful to be able to build that network or tap into that network so that if you need to make phone calls, if you need to write postcards, if you need to um, do lit drops, whatever it takes, right, to help a campaign. And you'll understand the nuts and bolts of how to run and how to win. And you'll understand the hard work and what kind of hard work and the dedication that is needed to see it through. Um, you know, and the, the points of stress and the points of joy, um, which all will make your experience richer in the end, whether you succeed in it or not. And that's a great pitch. You talked about the campaign nuts and bolts. So in our signature program, which is January to June, uh, we meet mostly on Saturdays, but some outside, outside sessions. Um, we require each woman who goes through a merge program to volunteer 10 hours on a campaign precisely for that reason. And we cover everything from fundraising to endorsements, to media interviews, to building your kitchen cabinet and your campaign team. So we do really equip women precisely with that and access to that network of women. Can you talk a little bit, because you know we've seen internationally that women leading in nations um, seem to really be doing better at handling coronavirus and this pandemic. Can you talk a little bit about both campaigning and leading during a pandemic and lessons you've learned or things that you think women are uniquely positioned to really be good leaders during these times as we try to get Kentucky's economy and our community back on track? I think, yeah, fundamentally, I think women, and this is, you know, whether it's a trope or not, I think women are more likely to talk to each other and kind of cut through the politics, the unnecessary politics, especially when you're dealing with a public health crisis on a global scale. Um, I think what we have seen is women that are leading their governments are doing so in exactly that manner. They're looking at how many people can I save? How can I help my people get through this crisis? And how can I help those around me as well get through this crisis, my allies? Um, and this is again happening on a global scale, but it's happening locally as well. So it's it's happening everywhere you look. Um, and and the the difference is that I think again women tend to be more willing to speak to each other and more willing to address things from a, from an issues based perspective um, and a policy based perspective rather than grandstanding or getting you know mired in, in rhetoric that doesn't actually result in anything. Um, tangible, any actual results. So I think I think it's really important that we notice that's going on right now because I, I think historically this is not. Um, I'm sure this is unprecedented historically. The number of women that are in government, the women leading their governments, um, whether it's coalition or whether they're the actual heads of state. And I think that's something that we need to pay attention to and see exactly how well a country or state or a locality can be governed by a woman when they put aside partisanship, when they put aside rhetoric and they focus on the task at hand. And we can clearly see um, that that's what these women are doing. So it should be a point of pride. It should be a point of encouragement um, in, in these sometimes gloomy days. Absolutely. So um, we are so thankful that you've joined us here today. I, I want to open it up if you have any final remarks or comments out to women out there, um, in particular, you know, women from immigrant backgrounds, um, Indian women, anyone in particular that you'd like to, to send a specific message to, um, because it is important, I think, that we see ourselves reflected in the leaders, just as you as you um, have mentioned, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the last time I saw you in person was in March, and I had brought a group of Latinx teens to your office, um, some of whom are, um, they were all immigrants, um, many of whom are first generation or immigrants themselves, and to see those young women and their eyes light up when they saw you and talk to you. Um, it's just really powerful. So I just wanted to say the last word before we close out and, and talk a little bit more about how to get involved with Emerge in our application, I'd like to open up to you if you wanna send out any specific messages. 
Yes, so the specific message I have is, is get involved, um, get engaged. Um, and I really, really cannot say this enough, you know, run for office. We need you, we need your perspective. Um, and it's something that you, the more you see, the more normal it becomes. And, and I wanna talk specifically to women of color and to immigrant women. I, you know, in my role as a legislator have had now access to other state legislators, other national um, legislators. And it's, it's something that, you know, you don't really realize you can do until you actually do it. And so don't let your background or your color or even your accent or your name or any of these things that you give a lot of import to because you've not seen it happen before. Um, don't let that stop you. And I know that we are had an issue in our campaign. Nobody could pronounce my name, even though it was pretty simple to me. Um, and so we agonized over what would go on a yard sign. But really the focus needs to be, what are you doing this for? What are you going to do to help your community? And when you're able to communicate that, people respond, people understand what you're trying to do. And so don't be afraid, um, be bold in your decisions and be engaged and involved um, and, and tap into those networks, build the networks and tap into the ones that you already have. Well, thank you so much, Representative Kulkarni, and we um, are delighted to see you as always, and we hope to see you um, pretty soon. We will be announcing soon an event that we're having uh, right after election, um, and we hope that you will be on that as well, that, so that our participants on this call um, might be able to tune into that event too. So we, we want to thank you for your time today. And I want to remind our audience of a few ways that you can become more involved with Emerge Kentucky. So right now, um, in late October, we are just a few weeks away from the application deadline for our 2021 training class. So if you are inspired by Representative Kulkarni, of course you're inspired, but if you want to know more about that training program, you can go to our website at www.emergeky.org and there you will find information about the application, how to apply to be a part of that class, which is really your first step of getting the tools you need and the skills you need to run for office. And if you wanna recommend a woman, there's also a spot there that if you're tuning in today and you say, I know this incredible woman that I want to recommend. You can send us her name and her contact information and we will follow up with her. You can also become involved by just um, sharing the information about Emerge. Follow us on social media, um, spread the good message of these incredible women who are serving in elected office right now, like Representative Kulkarni. And you can always consider becoming a sustainer at a level that makes sense for you. Part of how we are sustained as a nonprofit is the support of women and men across the state who invest in this future of having more women from diverse backgrounds serving in office. We've made some incredible strides over the past 10 years, but we have a long way to go. Uh, so I wanna thank Representative Kulkarni one more time and thank all of our audience for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing more applicants come in and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks so much. Thank you.